When you're working in Power BI and you're trying to create that perfect star schema model, one of the requirements that you're going to have in order to create that one-to-many relationship is that your lookup table or your dimension table should not have the duplicates. Now, sure enough, you can solve that by removing duplicates of the lookup table and the duplicates are going to be gone. But then how would somebody get to know that there were duplicates and the dimension tables need to be corrected for some duplicate values because they appeared? And if you keep the duplicates, then you would not be able to maintain the one to many relationship and your model will stop to refresh. So how do we solve both these problems? Like we also remove the duplicates, but we also sort of report which duplicates were found. That is what we are going to do in this video. You and I, some duplicates, some duplicates removed. Let's go together. All right, I'm in Power Query here and that's where I'm working with this tiny products table and that products table I'm considering to be my lookup or my dimension table. That means that the product code column should not have any duplicates while the model is being loaded. And at the moment, in, in the second step right here, I do have duplicates in my table. Take a look at the pro HO product ID right here. It's duplicated, bad. And the hcrem is also duplicated, which is pretty bad again. Now, sure enough, I can select that column, go to the next step, and I can remove the duplicates. But the problem is that once the duplicates are removed, I can't really capture them once again and report on both the things together, the unique values and the duplicated values. Let's just start with some magic in Power Query. So I'm gonna to go to the transform tab and that's where I will start to capture the duplicates. So transform, I'll use the group by operation. I'm gonna to go to the advanced right here. In the advanced, I'll group by the product code, create a new column by all. All rows is the summarization that I do and I click on OK. At the moment, the table that I get is also going to show you the unique values because the table that you use to create the group rows on is a unique table. That means remove duplicates is the previous step which contains the unique values. That's why you're not able to see duplicated rows. However, if you change that to the previous step, which is change type, which contain the duplicates, we will probably see the right results. So if I just maybe now uh, reference back it to the correct step, I'm gonna see that hcrem is duplicated and I get two rows for that particular table. Now, the thing is that I'm not looking at this grouping and all of these tables right here. All that I would wanna find out that is the table containing two rows or one row? If you're having two rows, then you duplicate. If you're having one row, then you're not a duplicate. So I'm just gonna come ahead and modify this uh, M code right here. I'm gonna get rid of all of this uh, optional input in Power Query right here and still commit to this formula, press enter, and this still works just okay. This gives you the table. However, I'm not interested in the table. I'm interested in the row count. I'm going to use a function called table dot row count and wrap that around this and press enter. What this is going to give me is the row count of these tables that I have created. This gives me the row count and sure enough, I can write a simple condition that, hey, why don't you give me a row count if that is more than one, like a true and false. So this is give me a, going to give me a true in case the row count was more than one. That means that the items were duplicated. I'm gonna apply a filter and I'm gonna keep only the trues in here, which is just gonna give me the duplicated products. All right, pretty good. Now the problem at this particular time in the query is that at this stage in the query, we have duplicated products at the last step of the query, but we also have the unique products as the third step of the query. How do I write a query that captures both the steps in the query. So what we're going to do is we're going to play around with records and we're going to alter a bit of the advanced editor M code right here. Now, if you're not privy to how records work, I've done a video on records in the past and I suggest that you take a look at that and you're going to learn some fantastic techniques of working with records. But now let's just go on with this. So I'm going to go ahead and first of all, increase the size here, put a comma and go over and start to create a new step. The new step I'm going to call this has two tables because I'm trying to return two steps as an output. So, uh, and I'm gonna create this as a record. So I'm gonna uh, start the square brackets to initiate a record. Records have columns and the first column name is going to be, let's say the unique, which is going to be the remove duplicate step because that's where we remove the duplicates and we had the entire table. So you can just reference that. Control C on that and just paste that right here. I'm gonna create a second column, which is going to be, let's say duplicates. And that is going to be the filtered row step, which I can copy that from right here and paste that right here. Now, at the moment, everything is good, but the problem is that you're still returning the filtered rows as an output. 
output and I would want to return the two row like a two table as an output that I have created. So I'm just going to copy that and paste that and control V remove that and say OK. And now what we're going to get is a record, right? And if you peek into this particular table, what you're going to see is that you can get the entire table, which is unique. The duplicates have been removed and this is where the duplicates are captured. Now, here is where the magic begins. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a new query and I'll say, hey, I'd like to create a blank query and I'd like to reference back to the products query. I'm going to call this query as products unique and I'm going to say equals to products press enter. Now I get both the columns right here. Which column do I want? I want the unique column. I'm going to use the square brackets and call that column of the record that I have created. Press enter and that is the query which you're going to load it into the model which is not going to give you any sort of errors because the duplicates are removed. Pretty nice. I'm going to duplicate this particular query and I'm going to call this query as products duplicate and this query I'm going to reference uh, another column which we called it as duplicate I believe and that was not the name so let's just go take a look at the name what was the name duplicates plural so I'm just going to add the s at the end press enter and this is going to give you the duplicates and this is the query that you can maybe load it in the model or you can give it out to anybody and they can work on these two products as to why there were duplicates in this particular query awesome all right that's been it let me know if you have any questions around this obviously you can enhance this technique to create more sophisticated applications in your query add more data to describe the duplicates and things like that i'm sure you can play around with this to enhance this further let me know if you have any questions around this and i'll be glad to reply in the end i'd like to give a big shout out about my tax and my power query courses in case you are a beginner and you'd like to learn the sophisticated techniques move up the level to solve harder and more difficult problems even off your own data i'd highly recommend that you take a look at my courses it's going to be super duper awesome thanks so much for sticking all around and i will catch you guys in the next one cheers and bye